Today's case is one that is breaking out of Hong Kong, and it is a wild one, guys. I am not talking it is just wild. Like, I am talking it is like a lifetime movie on steroids with a grenade with a pack of dynamite strapped to it and then wrapped in a Netflix special. I don't even know. It is so insane. It involves an insane extreme amount of wealth, beauty, a socialite, a social media influencer, a horrific evil family, dismemberment, human flesh in a soup that you would consume, heists, money laundering, a high-speed boat trying to escape. I mean, guys, it is wild. So we are going to break down everything we know about the case of Abby Choi coming out of Hong Kong right now. Guys, I'm Annie Elise. This is 10 to Life, and let's jump right in, but buckle up, because it's going to be a wild one. Today's video is sponsored by Kenzie. Kenzie is a unique IPL beauty tool that includes three different specialized attachments for specific self-care treatments, and it delivers quick and long-term results. The attachment tools focus on anti-acne, on age spots and skin rejuvenation, and my personal favorite, which is the one I'm sharing with you today, hair removal. The Kenzie IPL handset is extremely easy to use. It's convenient, it's safe, and most importantly, it delivers results. Now listen guys, I personally loathe shaving my legs. Don't worry, I still do it, but I hate it. And I'll be honest, sometimes I do get lazy and like I'll skip a day or two in between. But ever since my three-year-old cuddled up to me a few weeks ago and literally yelled spiky in my face, I have been emotionally scarred and I knew I needed to do something about it. But I am not down with messy wax or the pain that comes with it. Lasers are just so expensive, and I hate buying countless razors all the time or having to steal my husband, because let's face it, men's razors have way better blades than women's. It's all just a pain. In enters Kenzie, which has a way better hair removal method compared to any of those options like shaving, waxing, or laser. Now I'm gonna get TMI with you here for a bit, but I feel like we're friends, so I wanna keep it 100 with you. I always wanna be transparent, and if you didn't already know, I am part Middle Eastern which means that my hair comes in dark and it comes in coarse. Or like my three-year-old would say, it comes in spiky. And I started using Kenzie just two weeks ago and I am already seeing results. My hair is coming in thinner and slower, which is making me way more confident when I skip a few days between shaving. And not only am I seeing results with my hair growth, but Kenzie is specifically made for preventing ingrown hairs, for preventing razor burn, and for keeping your skin smooth after hair removal. Which yes, let me just say what you're all thinking, that means it works down there too. Now let me just show you how easy it is to use. The green power button is also used to switch on and off the level of intensity. Start on level one for your first treatment, but then you can change the intensity level based on your skin tone thereafter. The pink light on the intensity bar will begin to blink once you have put the light window onto your skin. You're going to want to ensure that the light window is flat against your skin, and once it is, you just press this big button here and it'll give the pulse. If the light window is not directly on your skin, it will not illuminate and you will not see that flash. You can also activate glide mode by holding this button for five seconds and then it will continuously illuminate so you can go over a larger surface area. The attachment targets the hair follicle to restrict and reduce the hair growth and it's so quick and easy to use. And my favorite part, as if it gets any better, is it does not take up loads of your time because all you need to do is use the attachment once a week and go over each area a maximum of three times. That's it, use after shaving and exfoliating and voila. After two to three weeks of use, you will notice slower, patchier, and thinning hair growth. And after 12 weeks, you'll notice a total visible reduction in hair growth. I'm telling you, you guys are going to love Kenzie as much as I do. And although I'm currently using it for hair removal, I am so excited to use the other attachments on my skin and see what magic it can work there as well. Go to my link below or kenzie.com, which is K-E-N-Z-Z-I, -Z and use my code LIFE20 for 20% off your device. I absolutely love my Kenzie handset, so don't wait and go grab yours today. Abby Choi grew up in a wealthy family who had a very successful construction business in China. 
When Abby was 15, she met Alex Chung. They got married once Abby was 18, and despite her young age, Abby didn't need to marry anybody for money, as she came from family money, and she actually supported Alex's family throughout their marriage. Later on, Alex and Abby had two children together. After three years of marriage, Abby and Alex got a divorce, but Abby maintained a pretty close relationship with Alex, with her mother-in-law, her father-in-law, and her brother-in-law, and reportedly continued to financially support them. She also considered Alex's brother, Anthony, to be one of her very close friends. Following her divorce from Alex, Abby started a relationship with Tamchuk Kwan, who goes by Chris. And Chris is the son of the founder of the dining chain, Tam Jai Yunin Mixayan. And I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, guys. I apologize if I'm not. They later had a wedding ceremony, and despite never recording their marriage legally, they considered themselves a married couple. They also had two children together. But Abby was more than just a wife and a mother of four at this point. She was a socialite, a successful model, a business owner, and a social media influencer in Hong Kong. Abby was said to have a net worth of more than 100 million Hong Kong dollars, which equates to about 17 million dollars in the United States. Abby was also the co-founder of Payomas Charitable Organization, which is a nonprofit for stray animals. Going through these pictures, it's hard to believe that she was 28 years old with four kids. Her two oldest children are 10 and 8 years old, but her younger children's ages are unknown. Now, Abby lived a fabulous and charmed life, almost like a dream. And in January of 2023, she even appeared on the cover of a fashion and luxury lifestyle magazine called La Officielle Monaco. Now, in this magazine, she was described as a style icon and media personality, who took the world by storm with her impeccable sense of style and her passion for fashion. The magazine added that she carved a name out for herself as one of the most sought-after influencers in the industry. It also praised her keen eye for style and her ability to mix and match pieces in unexpected ways, calling her a true trendsetter. In her interview for that magazine, Abby said, I am a person who keeps absorbing inspiration and always tries new styles. Sometimes I also try to dress up more extravagant by mixing and combining different looks. Abby was also featured in Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, and Elle, and was routinely invited to Paris Fashion Week, and sometimes even sat front row for designers. She modeled or had brand affiliations for major designer brands including Chanel, Dior, Christian Louboutin, Valentino, Louis Vuitton, and so many others. She shared snippets of her life on her Instagram account, which currently has more than 100,000 followers, where her profile is filled with picture-perfect poses of Abby showcasing her luxurious and privileged life while adorned in designer clothing, accessorized with Birkins, and her travels to some of the most beautiful places in the world. As I mentioned earlier, Abby supported her ex-husband's family financially after their divorce. She even arranged for Alex, his parents, and their two children to live in an apartment in Kadori Hill in a very luxury apartment. She also helped her former brother-in-law, Anthony, and bought him a house and involved him as her partner in some of her business deals, which ended up being somewhat successful. As if that wasn't enough, she also employed Anthony to work for her as her personal chauffeur. Abby's close friend said that her relationship with her ex-husband and his family was always amicable. And even Abby's new husband had dinner with Alex, went to the beach with Anthony, you name it. There was seemingly no bad blood and everybody was happy. They even spent some holidays together as one big family. Now, Abby absolutely loved being a mom, and she really cared about her children's safety. So she felt it would be best if she were to hire a personal chauffeur to take the children to and from school every day. This required two drivers. One driver was responsible for picking up the two children that she shared with Chris, while the other was responsible for picking up her ex-husband's children. Unfortunately, though, during the Chinese New Year, one of the drivers resigned, but the ex-husband's family suggested that Anthony take up that position and become her chauffeur, and being the kind and generous friend that Abby was, she of course agreed. This was her brother-in-law. On Tuesday, January 21st, 2023, Abby was reported missing after she didn't pick up her daughter from school that she shared with her ex-husband. Her husband didn't know where she was or what had happened to her. She wasn't with her parents either. Abby's family started to worry and then contacted the police because it didn't make any sense and they were beginning to worry that someone had abducted her. Two days later, 
Her ex-husband, Alex, contacted Abby's family saying he was disappointed that he wasn't notified before the police were called and that they really should have told him before doing that. Which let me just say, this is extremely suspicious. I get baby being caught off guard, but why wouldn't you want them to call the police as soon as they realized that she could be in danger and missing? It's very odd. In another interesting turn, Anthony, her brother-in-law, was supposed to be the one driving Abby to pick up her daughter from school. So the police contacted him and his parents to question them about Abby's disappearance. In this informal interview, the family allegedly provided false and misleading statements. So the police started to look into any CCTV footage that could have captured Abby's last moments before her disappearance, and to their surprise, they found something. The surveillance footage revealed that Anthony was driving Abby to pick up her daughter in a white Toyota SUV. On the drive there prior to entering the Lion Rock Tunnel, Abby's ex-husband, Alex, suddenly joined them in the vehicle. The police followed the white Toyota on CCTV, very carefully tracking its movements. Then, about an hour after Abby was last seen, CCTV picked up two white Toyota SUVs, driving towards an apartment in Lung Mai Village that was currently being rented by Abby's former father-in-law. In the video, the vehicles are seen arriving at the apartment at 3.12 p.m. The apartment in Lung Mai Village was approximately 17 miles from where Abby was last seen alive. CCTV footage also captured Anthony and his dad going to Junk Bay Chinese Permanent Cemetery and carrying a large white plastic box or tub type carrying case. Seeing this footage was extremely alarming to the police and led them to suspect that Alex, Anthony, and their father were all involved in Abby's disappearance and they worried that her body may have been dumped. Police went to that apartment and went inside. When they entered the house, they were met with a shocking discovery and a grisly crime scene. Officers found Abby's ID, credit cards, purse, and a slew of disturbing and unbelievably suspicious things that painted just a terrifying picture of what happened to Abby. And the evidence that it pointed to was that Abby was dismembered. There were two legs in the refrigerator, as well as meat grinders, meat cleavers, choppers, chainsaws, a hammer, long raincoats, gloves, and face shields. They also found two pots of soup that they believed contained human tissue. At the time, police believed that they were still missing Abby's skull and the rest of her body besides her legs. Anthony and his parents were arrested immediately, and police were now on a manhunt for Alex, her ex-husband. The father-in-law and Anthony have been charged with murder, while her mother-in-law faces one count of obstruction of justice. I'm assuming because of whatever statements they made where police previously believed that they were being misled, but I'm not 100% sure. Police finally arrested Alex at a development pier after receiving knowledge of his plan to board a speedboat and flee Hong Kong. Alex was found with 500,000 Hong Kong dollars, which equates to about 64,000 US dollars, all in cash and luxury watches worth about another 510,000 US dollars. Now, when Alex was arrested, he told the police that he wasn't feeling well and that he needed to go to the hospital. I mean, yeah, I'm sure that he didn't feel well, but I suspect that it had absolutely nothing to do with his physical health. However, the police transported him to Queen Elizabeth Hospital anyway, where he was later charged with murder. Superintendent Alan Chung held a news conference stating authorities found dismembered body parts believed to be Abby and they were charging her ex-husband and his family with her murder. Police believed that Abby was attacked in the car, leading to severe injuries, and that Abby was unconscious or possibly in a coma when she arrived at the house. Afterwards, she was killed and dismembered by Alex, by her brother-in-law Anthony, and by their father, her former father-in-law. Superintendent Chung said that their apartment was rented by her ex-husband's father only weeks before and that they believe Abby had financial disputes involving tens of millions of Hong Kong dollars with her ex-husband and his family. Because remember, she was supporting all of them. 
The superintendent ended the news conference by saying what happened at that apartment was arranged meticulously by cold-blooded killers. Four people have been charged in connection with the murder and dismemberment of a model and social media influencer. Abby Choi was reported missing Wednesday last week, and then parts of her dismembered body started being found two days later. Christy Lou Stout is in Hong Kong with the latest and a warning. The descriptions in this story you may find disturbing. A fashion model and mother brutally murdered in Hong Kong in a case that is sending shockwaves through the usually safe city. 28-year-old Abby Choi was a well-known social media influencer with more than 100,000 followers on Instagram who just weeks ago appeared on the digital cover of a luxury magazine. She was reported missing on Wednesday. On Friday, police say pieces of her body were found in a refrigerator in the northern Taipo district of Hong Kong. They also found a meat slicer and an electric saw. And later, police discovered a head, ribs and hair in a soup pot. It's a skull with hair, okay? And uh, as I said, unfortunately, there's a hole uh, on the um, right side rear um, um, on the skull. So I. The, the, the pathologists believe that that should be the, the fatal, fatal attack on the victim. Police arrested Abby Choi's ex-husband on suspicion of murder on Saturday. Police said they caught him at a pier on the city's Lantau Island. Reuters reports that Choi's ex-husband Alex Kwong appeared here at the Kowloon City Magistrate's Court on Monday along with his father and brother. They are all accused of murder. Now, Kwong's mother also appeared in court. She's accused of obstructing the case. All four were denied bail. Over the weekend, authorities launched a massive search operation to track down the rest of the model's remains. They deployed more than 100 police officers, including an abseil team and divers to search a cemetery and nearby catchwater in the area of Tsiungkwano. They're still looking for several body parts. A gruesome murder of this young woman in the spotlight who leaves behind four children, including two from the ex-husband who is now in custody. At this point, the police were still trying to find out the exact time of death. They were also looking for the missing body parts and conducted a search of Junk Bay Chinese Permanent Cemetery. About 100 officers, including divers from the force's elite special duties unit, known as Flying Tigers, and officers from the police tactical unit took part in this search, where they used drones and police tracker dogs to help find any trace of Abby. As their searches continued, the results from the forensic expert exam of the contents of those two pots recovered from the apartment were back. Superintendent Chung said that one of the pots measured 50 centimeters deep and 40 centimeters in diameter, and it was almost full and covered with thick fat, some green radishes, and carrots and meat believed to be human flesh. Small human bones were also found in the smaller pot, which was later identified as several ribs and a skull with some hair still stuck to it. A hole measuring two inches was found at the back of the skull, and pathologists believed that that was the blow that may have killed Abby, like someone bashed in her skull. All four of the family members appeared in court where they were held without bail. Later, police announced the arrest of a fifth person, known only by the initials N.G., who is a masseuse and she is believed to be the father-in-law's mistress and aiding and helping Alex evade law enforcement. Guys, I'm telling you, this is like a movie. You've got the family involved, now you've got the mistress who's a masseuse involved, you've got him on a speedboat heading out of Hong Kong, you have soup with bones and broth and tissue. What is even happening? The police stated that this mistress, NG, was suspected of having rented a luxury apartment in the Arch Sky Tower to hide Alex in there and help him evade police. After this arrest, police believed that they had everyone involved in custody. Since being arrested, she has been released on bail, which I don't know how, and it's believed that she didn't know about the murder part and was just helping Alex hide. Still sounds super fishy, though, if you ask me, but I guess we'll have to see how that pans out. The superintendent also said that the investigation has been made more difficult because of the uncooperative attitude of the suspects, saying, we want to find out as much as we can, not just to convict the murderers, but to give the answer to the deceased's family and return justice to the deceased. The devastating news horrified and crushed Abby's family and friends. 
A friend was quoted in South China Morning Post as saying that Abby has never said a bad word about her former in-laws, and Abby had an amicable relationship with her ex-husband, Alex. So what exactly happened here? According to reports, the murder was believed to have been committed over a dispute between Abby, Alex, and his family concerning a property worth tens of millions of dollars in that exclusive Kadori Hill area. And what's shocking is that apparently the mastermind behind this murder plot wasn't her ex-husband. It was none other than Abby's ex-father-in-law. An initial police investigation found that Abby had recently planned to sell the Kadori Hill property, which was worth 72.8 million Hong Kong dollars, which she had bought in her ex-father-in-law's name. Lawyers had advised Abby that she could take the sale proceeds of the property if she could present proof that she had been the one paying for it. She had promised to resettle her former husband and his family members elsewhere, but Alex's family was enraged by this and had several arguments with Abby over this. Now, Abby and the brother-in-law, Anthony, were close. She hired him to work for her. They were business partners on a project. She bought him a house. They were friends. She supported the whole family when she didn't have to. And it's not even like she was kicking them to the curb or ditching them completely or was going to place them in a bad living situation. Not at all. Now, even if all of this is true, how could these people who Abby considered family at one point do this to her? And why? Why would you kill the one person who is actually helping you financially? Well, that's actually because they weren't a normal family at all. Anthony allegedly was a social climber, power and money obsessed. Anthony's Instagram has multiple posts showing him with photos alluding to him living this high life, including fine dining and luxury cars like Rolls Royces. And there are tons of pictures at birthday celebrations, yacht parties, an international trip where he tagged Abby as sis, just really portraying this grandiose lifestyle. And the father was a former police sergeant who left the force in 2005 after allegedly being involved in a sex scandal. And I'm talking like a bad sex scandal, like a forced sex scandal, if you catch what I'm throwing down. And last but not least, her ex-husband, Alex. Alex had apparently been on the run for six years after being involved in a fraud scheme that targeted men on dating apps. What? What? He was also charged with several other criminal charges, and Abby had no earthly idea about any of this. The charges included seven counts of theft involving alleged stealing of 39 necklaces, 32 bracelets, 13 gold bars, 102 gold grains, six pendants, and 10 tails of gold. Now, remember in the beginning of this story where I mentioned that Abby and Chris had a wedding ceremony, but they were never legally married? Well, now it's unclear if Abby is legally divorced from Alex at all but it definitely seems like they were after one thing and one thing only, money. This last Tuesday, nearly 100 police officers clad in protective clothing and equipment began surveying a section of a landfill to try and find any other body parts, combing through a football field-sized dump using excavators and bulldozers. Security footage suggested one of the family members had thrown away evidence at a collection point, including body parts, clothing, phones, and a murder weapon. Police also confirmed the location where the daily refuse was unloaded with the garbage truck driver, and they were confident that they could recover the evidence. Officers initially found several bones that would need to be tested for confirmation of their origins, and that, with the search, could take a few days to complete. Family and friends of Abby made their first public appearance since her murder, gathering outside of the crime scene in Hong Kong's Taipo to pay their respects. Abby's mother was seen sobbing. Abby's husband, Chris, was also present with his mom, who said, Your kindness has been misplaced. People will be held responsible and justice will be done. One of the family friends spoke on their behalf, saying that her husband, Chris, was very happy and grateful to have met Abby, who brought him four very beautiful, cute, and obedient children and that she always loved and supported him. 
It's currently believed that all four children will remain with Chris and Abby's mother until everything is sorted out. But guys, we aren't even scratching the surface of this case. There is still so much information to uncover. It's been a little challenging to get these international documents and figure out exactly what the truth is because so many of the players in this case have deep-rooted issues and like some pretty sinister and shady pasts, but we're working on it. So there is going to be a lot more to update you guys on as this continues because what the true motive was the true execution of this plan how long had it been premeditated it blows my mind and there's still so much more we need to learn but it is still very fresh in the headlines so i will make sure to keep you updated as every new detail emerges make sure if you're not following along already to follow along on instagram at underscore annie elise because it is so much easier for me to just jump on my story and give you updates but i also will of course always circle back here on youtube with you and give you the updates here in a full video form so if you're not subscribed to the channel yet make sure you take a quick second right now to pause and just press that subscribe button all right guys let me know what you think about this case it is a wild one it literally i can't even say it's crazy like a movie because it's even crazier than any netflix lifetime movie i could cook up in my mind there are just so many crazy elements to this the soup the money the schemes he was running on men it's so bizarre it is so so bizarre and the worst and most horrific part of all is of course that her own family did this to her and thought they could get away with it over money it's unreal all right guys thanks so much for tuning in and until the next one stay safe